Hey everyone, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. We're going to introduce the ratio test for infinite series. So our ratio test says if we are trying to decide the convergence or divergence of some infinite series and it has positive terms, the limit that we're going to use in this test is the n plus 1 term over the nth term. So that's going to be our L. And then what we'll do is decide is our L greater than 1 or less than 1. And that will give us information about whether what we're trying to decide converges or diverges. If we get a limit of exactly 1, then that will be the case with the ratio test where the test fails. So some intuition for the ratio test, it helps us analyze how quickly terms decrease to zero. So if I have the limit of basically some term and some term right after it on the top of the fraction, and we compare that as a ratio. So if my limit is less than one, we'll get that the infinite series converges. Let's look at just choosing an L for instance and seeing what that really means. So let's just say the limit was 3 fourths. So what that means is eventually, whether it's hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of terms down the line, eventually each term on the top looks about 3 fourths as big as the term on the bottom. In other words, the next term is about three-fourths as much as some term in the list. And that just looks that way forevermore at some point and then beyond that in the series. So at that point, it takes on kind of this quality that a geometric series has, where any term, when you look at the next one, it looks basically about three-fourths as much as it. And since we know uh, with the geometric series, when you have a ratio that is less than one as a positive number, we know that that's going to converge, right? So that's the idea with L being less than one and our our series converging. Um, conversely, obviously, if you had a limit that was larger than one, we'll get that the series diverges, you know, say the limit is two, right? So that means at some future point on down the line in the list of terms, that means that the next term looks about double the one before it. So at some point, maybe many terms in the future past what we can see in a list, but those terms basically behave like a geometric series with a ratio of two. And we know a geometric series where we have a positive ratio that's greater than one, something like two, then that will diverge. So that's why we would get diverge in this case with a limit greater than one. If the limit is one, the test fails, and that's because it doesn't really tell us uh, one way or another. The terms may be getting smaller, quickly enough for the series to converge, or they may not be. So we won't really know. If we get L equals 1, we'll have to use some other test for convergence or divergence. Let's go ahead and work through some examples here. We have the sum from 1 to infinity of n to the fourth over 4 to the n. So we're going to go ahead and look at the limit of the n plus 1th term over my nth term. So we'll go ahead and say L is going to equal the limit of the n plus 1 term means I just need to plug in n plus 1, where n is, so n plus 1 to the 4 over 4 to the n plus 1. That's my n plus 1 term. I'm going to compare it to the nth term. That's just the formula that I see here, right? So that's just over n to the 4 over 4 to the n. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and bump this up and multiply by reciprocal instead. So we'll get 4 to the n on top, we'll get n to the four on bottom. And we'll need to take the limit of this. Let's do some simplifying here. So my L is going to equal my limit. If you notice we have some copies of four we can reduce. I'm going to reduce this entire four to the n. n copies come off here. If I reduce n copies down here, I'll have one left on the bottom. So I'll actually get the limit of n plus one to the fourth over four times n to the fourth. Now, it may not be super easy for you to see what's going on in the top. If you think about expanding this out, what would the lead term be, the most powerful term? Well, we would have an n to the 4 term if we distributed 4 copies of n plus 1, and we'd have some other terms. And then we would have a 4n to the 4 on the bottom. So if this is the most powerful term on the top, and others are smaller powers of n, right, or constants, and this is the term I have on the bottom, then I think we can see just by comparing the lead coefficients that our limit is going to be a fourth here. So in this case, my limit was less than one. That's the important part here with the ratio test. So since my limit is less than one, I know that this original series will converge. So we say that this series converges by the ratio test.
Looking at another example, we have the sum from one to infinity of 2n quantity factorial over n factorial all squared. So we'll go ahead and look at our limit of the n plus 1th term over the nth term. Uh, so I need to plug in n plus 1. I just want to be careful with my 2 here. So on top, if I have 2 and then I have an n plus 1 next to it, I would distribute the 2. So I'd actually get 2n plus 2 factorial on the top over. And then here on the bottom, I would get n plus 1 factorial all squared divided by the original, right, divided by a sub n, which is going to become multiplied by the reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the writing of it down here just to write the reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and just say multiply by reciprocal instead. So the n factorial square will be on the top and we'll get the 2n quantity factorial on the bottom. And we'll have to figure some of this out by reducing some of this stuff. So if I look at these factorials here on the diagonal, I have 2n plus 2 factorial and 2n factorial. Uh, this one is two larger than this factorial, so this will have two terms in it that this does not. It will have the largest two terms in there, so if I reduce these, then I will have on top, I will have a 2n plus 2 and a 2n plus 1. And then everything below 2n plus 1 would be 2n, 2n minus 1. All of that's going to be in this one. And so it would reduce with the rest of this factorial. So the other thing we need to look at is we have n factorial squared and we have n plus 1 factorial squared. So I'm just going to go ahead and write those in. So I have n factorial and n factorial, right? That means I have two copies of that. And then on the bottom here, I have n plus 1 factorial. I have two copies of that, right? because of the square. So I can again go ahead and reduce each of these. If I look at this n factorial with this n plus 1 factorial, I'm going to have an n plus 1 left over on the bottom when I reduce it with n factorial on the top. The same thing will happen with that one there. So what we'll get there, we will have the limit of 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, these factorials will reduce with the n plus 1 factorials on the bottom, but we'll end up with an n plus 1 left from each of them. So we will get this limit, and if you think about distributing out what you will get, the most powerful term on the top, you'll get a 4n squared in the front plus some other stuff. And then on the bottom, when you distribute this out, the most powerful term you'll get is a single n squared, and then you'll get some other stuff, right? You can write that down or not. This is really going to determine the limit to these lead terms. These are the same degree, so I compare the lead coefficients, 4 over 1. So my limit here is 4. Now, that limit, 4, is greater than 1. So with the ratio test, since my limit is greater than 1, I know that this original series diverges by the ratio test. Okay, looking at another, I have the sum from 1 to infinity of n factorial over n to the n, so I have factorial growth over super exponential growth. If we use our ratio test, then we'll go ahead and take the limit of the n plus 1th term, so that would be the n plus 1 factorial over, so our base changes here into n plus 1, and then our exponent also changes into n plus 1. So that's the a sub n plus 1. We would divide by the original. That's going to be like multiplying by the reciprocal of the original. So I'll write n to the n on top, n factorial on bottom. And now we'll look at what we can do here to simplify. If I notice the factorials, so well, let's at least go ahead and reduce our factorials. If I have an n plus 1 factorial of an n factorial, then I'll have an n plus 1 left, and all the rest of the expressions from this factorial will reduce with n factorial. Um, so I have an n to the n, and then I have an n plus 1 to the n plus 1. Now the problem is these exponentials, I can't really reduce these. They're not the same base and they're not the same power, so I can't write them together very simply in their current form. Uh, what you might notice though is since I reduced the factorials, now I have an n plus 1, and that is a similar statement to this n plus 1 base down here. 
So what we can now use is properties of exponents, right? I have n plus 1 and I have n plus 1 to the n plus 1. So if I reduce one copy on the top with one copy on the bottom, that's going to get rid of the plus 1 in the exponent. So that will give us the limit of n to the n on top and n plus 1 to the n on the bottom. Now these are not the same base, but they do have the same exponent. So what I can think of is I can think of this as the entire fraction n over n plus 1 all to the n because they at least have the same exponent. So that's okay to do. So if we go ahead and think back to one of the limits that we wanted you to know from our videos on infinite sequences. Remember we knew, and this looks kind of similar to, if we knew the limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the n, that was actually a limit of e, if you recall. And we're going to use that information here to do this limit. So what I'm going to do to sort of get this in this form is actually think of the reciprocal of this. So what I'm going to do is take the reciprocal of this and say that's going to be the same as the limit of n plus 1 over n to the negative n, right? What I've done is taken the reciprocal of the inside and then went ahead and changed the power. So I'm sort of taking the reciprocal in here and then taking the reciprocal out here. So really this is the same thing as what we started with if I take the reciprocal twice. Now what we have is we have the limit of, if I break these up into two separate fractions, 1 plus 1 over n to the negative n. Well, what is that? Well, this negative means I have the reciprocal of this whole thing, right? So that's really going to be the limit of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And I know this limit down here, that limit is e. So this limit is actually going to be 1 over e. Now, we want to remember what is e. e is a number that's about 2.7-ish and some change. So if you have 1 over 2.7-ish, is that going to be greater than or smaller than 1? And the answer is, this is going to be less than 1. So we get a limit of less than 1, and that means that our original series here converges by the ratio test with a bit of limit magic here and manipulation. Let's look at one last example here. We have n equals 3 to infinity. I just started the lower summation at 3 so we get all positive terms. We have ln of n over n. So our limit here is going to be the n plus 1th term over the n term which will be ln of n plus 1 over n plus 1 and then divide by the original, which will be the same as multiply by the reciprocal, so we'll just write n over ln of n. Now if we look at, um, maybe I have an ln here and an ln here, and I have some polynomials sort of diagonal from each other, so maybe if I consider just rewriting this as n over n plus 1 and ln of n plus 1 is over ln of n, this may be a little bit uh, easier to do. So if I just look at this part here, I have the same degree and I have lead coefficients of 1. So this limit's going to be 1. Uh, you can take one iteration of L'Hopital's rule if you want to decide that. Um, and then here I have this log of n plus 1 term over n term, and you may already know what that does. You may not. Um, but remember, limits obey products. So we have uh, limit of 1 here times whatever limit I get here will be the overall limit. So since we have a times 1 here, that part's not really going to matter. So that will just end up being the limit of the ln of n plus 1 over the ln of n. And let's say we're not sure what to do with this. So what we could do is simply use L'Hopital's rule. And we'll go ahead and say that will be equal to the limit of the derivative of ln of n plus 1 if that was a function would be 1 over n plus 1. And the derivative of ln n would be 1 over n if that were a function as well. So if I bump the bottom up and multiply by the reciprocal then we get the limit of n over n plus 1. And that should look familiar because we already did it. So this overall limit for the ratio test 
is one. And remember when we get a limit of one, the test fails. So here we'll just say that the ratio test fails. Now this wouldn't be our answer to the question, right? We would still want to figure out convergence or divergence unless it was just saying only use the ratio test and the problem that we were trying to do. But since the ratio test fails, we will need to come up with some other test to figure out convergence or divergence. Um, the integral test would be a good one to use here. You could use the integral of ln x over x dx uh, and determine convergence or divergence for this series. Okay, hopefully this helps you with your ratio test. Check out our next video on the root test, which is super similar to how the limits in the ratio test work. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next one.